happy Sunday. Happy New Year. I miss you guys. I have I have literally not been able to get on the phone for like ever. Um, how are you guys? Hola. Happy 2018. Like I didn't think I would make it. <laughs> like I was so exhausted all of 2017. Um, I took like the longest nap ever. <laughs> And um, I just wanted to come on live and wish you guys a happy new year. I haven't been able to post anything. I'm just kind of like in my own world, getting ready for 2018. It's going to be a great year. There's so many things to look forward to. Um, so I figured let me just go on live and like see what's up. Um, I'm coming to Peru this month. It's going to be like this whole visit. The Pope is going to be in Peru at the same time that I'm going to be in Peru. So we're trying to set something up. Um, if I get to meet the Pope, I think that I, I don't know, like that's going to be some crazy, that's going to be crazy, but we're going to try to set something up. Um, maybe I can go to his mass, like something, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's like, I would never thought like visiting South America, I would get the opportunity to see the Pope. So, um, that's a big deal. So I'm going to be in Peru January the 20th and then I'm going to be in Mexico in February. Um, February is also fashion week, so I have to like double up on like the fashion stuff and the appearances and stuff. Um, I really, I took a long time off. I haven't been doing a lot of appearances, um, but 2018 is going to be different. Like we're going to take 2018 by storm. Um, and I've revamped my show and I can't wait to come out and perform for you guys. And you know what? I don't really care what anyone has to say. Um, I am like maybe one of a kind. I'm multifaceted. You know, I like to do my shows. I like to come out and see you guys in the meet and greets. I like to walk fashion shows. I, you know what I mean? I like to do acting and I'm just going to do it all. So fuck what anyone else has to say. I want to meet my fans. I want to see you guys. Um, hi James. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> my best friends on the live. That's so funny. Hey Michelle. Beautiful girl. Hi Yuri. I miss you. Yuri. What happened to our date? You're supposed to take me out for some cheeseburgers. What happened? <laughs> um, so yeah. Also, my activism work is going to be super, super amazing for Pride season this year. I have some really cool stuff planned for you guys. Um, and going back, touching back on that subject of like, kind of like what category I fit into. Um, I'm just going to make up my own category. You know what I mean? I don't care anymore. I want to see you. I want to see you guys. I want to perform for you guys. I want to act for you guys. I want to model for you guys. I want to fucking do whatever I want to do. Um, but for you know, for so long, I was trying to take into consideration like what everyone was has been telling me, like, oh, you know, about cis normality and about passability and about passing privilege, and you know, I really took t took time to like learn, like, all right, let me learn what these people are talking about because I have no clue like I'm just going about my life my transition like my career and I really want to be able to be a positive representation of everyone you know that's really what I want to do so um I took a step back to educate myself and yeah so I'm prepared to head out and do more activism work and um and be there for you guys because I don't know I like that stuff so yeah just reading some of these comments. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm watching the Kardashians on a Sunday. Um, where's my coffee? This is my favorite little mug. Oh. Bueno. One thing I do want to say about like cis, norma cis normative, I have I posted a video about one of the other trans girls explaining to me that I should be more vocal about you know saying how I don't know about being cis normative or having passing privilege. But what I don't understand is that this is one thing. Please don't judge me because I'm just trying to gain some clarity. So for the non, I guess for the girls that are non passable who say that they have, you know, a tougher time navigating through society. I feel like on one hand, it's understandable, you know, if they feel like they're not succeeding in, in their transition or succeeding in life because they're not passable or whatever. 
But on another hand, a lot of those same girls are working on becoming passable. So it's kind of like, it's hard to decipher whether they're a little jealous or if they really want to have representation. Because I feel like, why tear somebody else down? Like, I didn't know I'm cis-normative. I didn't even know what the hell cis-normative meant. You know, like, all these words are kind of new. So, for some, I feel like for someone to, to tell me that I'm not doing a good job as an advocate or being, um, or being visible because of my passing privilege or because of the way that I look, I kind of feel like it's, a, it's like a crock of shit. Like, I should be educated on the subject so I can speak about it. But I should not be discarded or dismissed because of the way that I look or because of the way that I present or because of my goals in my transition or because of the goals in my life. Like I being trans is not one thing like everyone has their own experience and my experience is to blend. That was my goal. And that's OK, too. Like I feel like the, these like the passable girls out there like have all this like hate and it's like, dude, why are you hating for like? We, we're still surviving like it's still another chapter in our transition so it's like it's a little unfair to kind of not um show some respect you know what i mean so what else wait the bathroom law does anyone know what's happening with the bathroom law in new hampshire there's no protection Okay, if you guys can send me some information about the these new bathroom laws. I haven't heard anything about the bathroom laws. Um, from what I... The last thing that I heard was that they have allowed trans people to sign up for the military. That was the last thing that I heard. That it was, it was okay. Like, Trump's ban didn't go through or whatever. That was the last thing that I heard. But I haven't heard any updates yet. So... Okay, so look, there's this is a this is a perfect question right here. I'm gonna pin it. Okay, is she still a drag queen or is she trans because she has long hair? Okay. First of all, performing in drag is a character and it's a show. The reason why so many people don't understand why there's no presence in in the drag community, like trans presence in the drag community is because we have no mainstream representation right now. But just FYI, where when I was coming up, this is in the past 10 years, there's always been a drag king presence, a trans queen presence, drag queen presence in the drag shows. There was always diversity in the drag shows. Once RuPaul's Drag Race hit mainstream, it all changed and everyone else was cut out. So that's just the truth, okay? And it's up to, you know, Logo or whoever, um, VH1, or RuPaul or whatever, it's up to them if they want to be more inclusive, but at the same time, they don't have to be. It's their show. They could do whatever they want. You know what I mean? So, but the reality of it, tr the truth is that if you go to any local gay bar or drag show, you're always going to find diversity in the show. And it's a shame that it's not the same representation on the television. So the mainstream, the, the mainstream world still is going to stick to these narrow minded views of drag performers until RuPaul decides to say, hey, I want to do something nice for the rest of the community, the rest of the performers. I want to be more inclusive. So until that day comes, it's everyone's going to always um, think black and white when it comes to drag. And it's sad because it's like, it, it is what it is. Everyone has to fight for it, you know. But for me, I'm going to still perform. You know, I am trans, yes, but I'm just a, I'm female, like I'm a woman every single day. I walk out of my house, people who don't know who I am never question my gender. It is what it is. They see, they see me and they treat me as the woman that I am, you know? But if I choose to perform in a drag show because I'm a great performer, because I love performing, I don't think I should be excluded, you know? But at the same time, it's hard to change millions of people's idea or view of who should be performing in a drag show when they've already been coached to think that it's only gay men that are allowed to perform. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of a tough subject because I don't know. It's 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 fucked up. It's whatever. But as far as me, as far as I'm concerned, like 
I'm gonna do what I've always done. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm a great performer. That's what made me famous. Um, obviously, like, that Showgirl video really put me on all these mainstream platforms. I was on CNN, Entertainment Tonight, you name it. I didn't need social media to help boost me. You know, like, it was it was there already. So it's like, if if maybe I'm the one person who can function in a drag show, on a television show, on a runway show, if I'm that girl, then I'm gonna be that girl. And I'm not gonna, I don't care what anyone has to say about me because this is my life, my career, and my trail that I'm blazing, that I've been blazing from day one. Because I, I was part of the whole trans, me, Laverne, Janet, like that whole thing that happened, that happened to us for a reason. So I'm just gonna continue to invest in my business and my brand and see what happens, you know? Like I'm open to, any and all collaborations who knows me maybe me and rupaul will sit down and have a conversation i don't know you know but i'm just gonna do my thing so yeah i hope that answers your question because i love performing and um if i can't perform on a stage within my own community then it's like where am i where else am i gonna perform what am i you know what i mean like i have a few ideas but I should be able to uh, to be versatile. We all love a versatile girl, right? <laughs> we all love a girl that can do different things. So, bueno. Uh oh, here's a here's a good question. Here we go. Here we go. Um, did you did the total transitional penis? Sorry if I'm being rude. Well, um, yes. To answer your question, yes. And no, you're not being rude. I understand this is human curiosity. Um, but I don't want to talk about that subject too much. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Um, only God will tell, but yes, you possess major talent. Thank you, babe. Yeah, biological women can do drag. Listen, drag is what you bring to the table, okay? It's your makeup, your song choice, your attitude, your lip sync, it's you. You could, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter who you are in real life. You understand? Because drag is not necessarily real life. You're, you're creating a character. You're creating an essence. You are performing to the beat of your own drum. And, and it should be a place to be free. It should not, there shouldn't be many restrictions. I understand competition. That's fine. It's friendly competition. But I feel like you could be biologically female, biologically male. As long as you can get it together and entertain all are welcome that was what I, that was I was under that impression when I was coming out to the clubs to trying to find who I am as a person you know I picked that up real quick you could come from anywhere as long as you come correct you should be able to perform so yeah <clears throat> how do you deal with always being reminded about this topic you know I try to be really um, I try to be really patient because there's a ton of people that follow me like 400,000 people and there's millions of people that watch drag race and there's millions of people out there billions of people out there in the world so I don't really get tired of talking about this because I feel like it's important because I don't know who's listening who's watching this for the first time you know what I mean they might learn something so I really don't I just I deal with it in a way of being like compassionate you know because like I feel like I mean, I know I've had a lot of promotion and a lot of success, but I still feel like I'm like a small fry, you know? Like, I still feel like the LGBT community in general is still a small fry, you know? So it's like, we're going to have to have these conversations over and over again, help people understand, explain it in different ways so people, because, you know, especially text, like, if I were to write something really long, like a nice long explanation, someone is going to read it and, and go left, you know what I'm saying? So it's like... You have to be prepared to be able to explain the same idea, but from different perspectives so that they can, it can be understood. So it's a little annoying, but it's part of the job. You know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for wanting to educate and want, to, like, I want to do this. Like I want to be the one to give clarity because I, I have walked this path since I was 20 years old, not even since 18 years old, I'm 32. You know what I'm saying? I've been through the club scene. I've been through, I've, I've tried, you know, before my transition, I, I have fit so many molds and I've, I've literally lived so many different experiences. 
And with that experience, I'm able to speak. It's one thing to be arrogant and to be educated in one area and think that you can tell everyone, you know, how to think or whatever. But I've actually felt what it feels like to hide not only my gender, but my sexuality and then try to conform to, you know, heter the heterosexual world before my transition. I lived that. After that, you know, I went out to the club scene to try to, like, find myself. And, and I lived, you know, in within the gay community. And then I was within the drag community. And then after that, I was in the trans community. And now I'm just in, in the female community. You know what I mean? Like, so I've lived years in, in different roles to try to really find who I was. So that experience is so priceless. I don't give a fuck what anyone says about me. You could talk as much shit as you want to talk about me, but you can never take away my experience and my knowledge. You know what I mean? First-hand knowledge. So I think that, yeah, it's it's something that I've, I've always wanted to deal with. Who's Corey Mason? Hi, Corey Mason. Oh, I remember you. Hi, boo. Oh, damn, you guys wrote me a ton of comments. Actually, after I got my bottom surgery, my arms got really thin and I have to like do a ton of um, push-ups in order to get them like, I want some like tone, I want some muscle tone. You know what I mean? Like I get no muscle tone. You don't understand. That's the one and only thing that sucks about having bottom surgery is that I have zero testosterone. Zero. So... I can be in the gym and I can work so hard at the gym to like build some muscle tone and definition. It'll take me like double the time because I don't have enough testosterone in my body. Like I'm literally such a soft, smooth, silky like kind of girl that to be rock hard, it's just such a mission. But I usually do a lot of push-ups and that helps. Um, that helps. Yeah. Um, bump up, trying to read all of your comments. Do you still talk to the Heathers? No, I don't really talk to them that much. But I love them still. I heard Manila got married, Raja. Everybody got married. I'm getting divorced. Everybody got married. It's just like such a weird time. Why don't you start a YouTube channel just asking? I'd love to see you teaching the world. Actually, I, um... I am working on a YouTube channel. I went to meet with the YouTube executives and um, we're working on something. I just can't say. Um, but listen, don't sleep on me. That's the one thing. Don't ever sleep on me. I'm always working. I'm always hungry. I'm always plotting. I'm always planning. You know what I mean? Like I'm an active. I don't just sit around and wait for the phone to ring. Okay? So that's one of the things that I think um, keeps me focused as well. But YouTube is definitely in the works already. It's going to be amazing. Um, let's see. Oh my God, no way. I'm 29 and I feel so old. Girl, don't feel old. You're only as old as you feel. You could be 50 and feel like you're 16, you know? Well, maybe like 18. Um, I'm trying to read all your comments. Best workout for abs. Um, is Pilates. If you guys are familiar with Pilates, it's like one of the best exercises for your abs because you use the rest of your body to like uh, work your core out. So you keep your core tight, lay flat on the ground, and you can like lift your legs up, lift your lift your um, shoulders up. And what I like to do is like kind of press down like this, and it really like tightens up everything. Are you still trying to become a Victoria's Secret model? I would love to. Um, model for Victoria's Secret, of course. But, you know, we have to see what happens. I don't know what is... Okay, there you go. Sorry, I just got like a text and yeah. What do I think about Victoria's Secret? I, I love Victoria's Secret. Those girls are so um, strong. When and how do you tell, wait, what? When and how do you tell a guy that you're trans? Well, I don't really, I don't know, because I don't really, I, it's been a while since I've been in that situation. I'm very public with who I am on my social, 
So I don't really date or anything like that. Like I'm not really looking for that. But um in the past I've had, you know, situations and stuff. And I tell people straight up, like, it depends. It it really depends. Um, if I feel safe, I will, you know, be straight up. Or I'll just start talking about the subject to see like what they say about it. And if they say like something rude, then I know to like swim somewhere else. Have you seen the controversy about Courtney Act on Big Brother? No, I haven't seen. I just wanted to say I'm transgender as well and you're my role model. You have an amazing heart and you're beautiful, but I'm so insecure about my weight and my face. I feel so out of place. I don't know what to do. Aw. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, second of all, you have to understand that in your transition, you're always going to feel a bit insecure because what you're doing is you're going from one gender to the next and it's not easy. You know, like it's, it's like, it's a day to day process. And on some days you're going to feel like you look like the most beautiful woman in the world. And on other days you're going to feel like you're, you look horrible. Like welcome to living the life of a woman. Like this is what happens. And that's why it's good to have a strong female um, support system that can help you with those emotions and those feelings. Cause I really feel like as, um, someone who obviously has lived before my transition, like I, I don't remember really feeling insecure. I don't know if it was the testosterone or I don't know what it was, but I was just on a different, different, different plane. Like, I, I don't know. Now it's like after my transition, I'm way more sensitive, you know, emotionally and, um, even physically, like if, if I, you know, rub my arm too hard, it turns red. You know what I'm saying? Like everything is just very sensitive. So it's taken me a while to understand, like have a good, um, strong, like mental health. You have to make sure that you take care of your mind, your soul, your spirit, because in this life, living, tra living, being trans is going to affect you because you're revealing, you're revealing your soul. You know what I'm saying? Like you're basically living who you are on the inside, on the outside. And honestly, most people, they're such bullshitters. Like they don't even know how to do that. It's like, I've learned that a lot of people in like the straight society or whatever, like there's a, there's great genuine love and all that. But I also feel like there's many facades and it's hard to find, um, depth and, and, and people who are genuine. So, um, you have to be careful to not get hurt, you know? So you got to make sure you take care of your mind, take care of your body and understand that it's a day to day. Um, it's a day to day transition. So don't rush it. You know what I mean? Just love yourself throughout the process. Understand that you're flawed and you're working on it and you're working on something to make you happier. Just remember that and you'll be okay. I promise. Will you bang me? No, I won't. What do you think about Kylie Jenner hiding her pregnancy? I love that Chloe is finally, is finally about hers. I think, I think that any woman has the right to reveal or not reveal you know, it's their, it's personal. I don't know. Um, bum, bum, bum. There's a, there's this trans woman on big brother that has a phobia of drag queens and is creating a lot of issues about LGBT. Really? Wow. I have to go, I have to look up big brother. I haven't watched big brother and I don't even know how long. Did you feel like you wanted to make the transition while on RuPaul? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> I actually, Raja and Manila knew what I was doing because what I planned to do was like, I thought in my mind, I was like, all right, let me go on Drag Race. And then I was going to be done completely with performing. I was like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to transition. I'm going to be married. And that's it. That's going to be my life. I'm going to move to the suburbs. And at least I can look back at Drag Race to be like, wow, look how far I've come. You know, that was my idea. So the whole time I was competing, like I would be in like Manila's room or Raja's room, smoking weed or whatever that we would be doing. And, um, <clears throat> I would tell them like, oh, I can't wait to get home and start my transition, start my medical transition, blah, blah, blah. And, um, we just knew. So I was just waiting to finish filming. I think that I would have been hungrier and I would have been in it if, if I 
wasn't thinking to myself like oh this is kind of like my last hurrah like when i filmed drag race that's what it was about like this is my last hurrah i've done so well in the drag community i just want to have something to represent that you know a moment in time that i can look back at and so on and so forth because i knew that my life was going to change after that i was in a transition and i don't know what was going to happen so um so yeah i definitely knew um so yeah mm. Curvy girl Megan, what's up? Carmen, please answer my question. When, when will you make a new song or video? Well, I don't know. I never thought about that. I see that all these girls from Drag Race have their songs and their tours and all that. And honestly, like after Drag Race, I be I got so wrapped up in becoming a model that I didn't really have time to focus on that. Um, so, you know, it's definitely something that I thought about with management. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I have that one song with the Heathers. The one, my little one little verse. Um, I thought I did a good job. I don't know. I wasn't really focused on that. You guys have to understand that, like, when I get pulled in different directions, like, I usually have one main focus. And my main focus in 2017 was my modeling. So I just got signed with Wilhelmina Miami. So thank God that that, you know, it was worth it. My, all my, you know, my whole, the whole year basically was worth, worth investing. Um, so yeah, if I focus on having more of a performance driven career, who knows what the possibilities are, you know, I don't know, but it's, I'm definitely open to it. I don't know. We'll see. Because I didn't do good in that, well, I don't know. Because I remember that challenge on the show. I didn't do good in that challenge. So. But I've, I've grown, you know, I've grown a lot. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, which drag was your main support during RuPaul's Drag Race? Um, I would say Manila and Raja. But more Manila. Raja was kind of like, all right, I know I'm going to win, so I'm not going to give you any answers. <laughs> Manila was more like, let's be friends. Raja was more like, all right, you're cute, but, you know, I don't want to help you too much. Eyebrows <laughs> mm, on fleek. How are you so positive? What advice do you give someone who isn't positive at all times? I'm not positive at all times. Like I have, it's a practice, you know, like you have to learn how to see the good in every situation, but that that's a journey. Like it, you have to first understand yourself. Like I picked up a lot of bad habits. Like I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, a little bit of like an attitude kind of like, you know, I had this coming out of the club scene, you know, you pick up different vibes. And it's about you just sitting down and realizing who you truly are. Like I knew that I wasn't, I knew that I wasn't like anyone else. And I, and I was just looking for someone to be like, you know, and then I realized that doesn't work. I have to be myself and I have to even explore those dark areas of my mind um, and pull it out, you know, and be like, why am I so angry right now? Why am I so hurt right now? Why do I feel so defensive? Like, how can I handle the situation better? And until you sit down and do that for yourself, you won't be able to necessarily grow because you'll always just kind of stagnate and, and nothing will change. So it took me with, it, I, I feel like it's hand in hand with my transition. It took me some time to like really understand that life is a choice. And your perception is like, you can look at it, all right, you know, something bad happens. I can look at it like, damn, this sucks, my life is over. Or I can look at it like, all right, well, now it's time for a change. Now, what? how can I make this better? How can I make it better than the last time? And it's a practice. You have to do that every single day. And then eventually, it's like your mind starts to change and it starts to function on that level. And you start to seek out ways that you can make your experience better. <clears throat> So that's what works for me. And plus I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of, um, 
I, I have really good friends that I can have like deep intellectual conversations with. It's not always about looking good or having the best body or wanting to show off or none of that stuff. Like I have to live a real life. You know, eventually I'm going to get old. I want to be like a pretty fly old lady. I want to be like, you know, smart and experienced and cultured and you know what I'm saying? So I have to be able to not only give in to like the bad side, you know, so to speak, the egotistical side. I have to also have some something else to offer when I when I when I'm not pretty anymore or whatever like if I decide to like let myself go and you know move to the suburbs I don't know I, I want to be able to have something else you know my mind is important so so yeah that's what that's what works for me uh, <clears throat> I'm like tearing up I don't know what's going on um, all right, guys, I think I've answered as many questions as I can. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, have you ever thought about writing a book about your life and your experience? I think it would be great. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> I am working on a book right now, and I'll let you know when it's done. But I have to go because I have some allergies right now to deal with. Um, but it was good to talk to you guys. Happy New Year. I'm sorry I haven't been able to post like a Happy New Year post. Um, but there's a couple new things coming up next week that I have that I'll start posting some new some new content. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for loving me. You know, guys don't understand. Like, it's you guys are amazing. Um, I'll talk to you soon. I'll check back in with you. Don't forget, Peru. <clears throat> I'm performing in Peru. On January the 20th, I might be meeting the Pope. Keep our fingers crossed. February is Fashion Week, and also I'll be in Mexico. So I look forward to that, and I'll talk to you soon. Be